One of my favorite Pittsburgh traditions is the Dollar Bank Three Rivers Arts Festival. You've got 10 whole days of free art and music downtown in the cultural district, plus some great food and drinks on site if you like a little snack while you browse the vendors. The fest runs from noon to 9 p.m. May 31st to June 9th. And this year, there's a special treat, a mobile circus troupe that mixes acrobats with a beer and food truck. I don't understand, but I can't wait to see it. Cirque Kickass will be performing at 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. on June 8th and 9th, so mark your calendars. You can learn more about the festival at trustarts.org slash TRAF. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, it's berry picking season, the pools are opening, what's not to love about summer in Pittsburgh? We're sharing some of our favorite hacks and events to help you make the most of the city this June. Whether you're looking to go camping, celebrate pride, or even do some competitive pogoing. It's Wednesday, May 29th. I'm Mallory Falk, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. I'm here with CityCast Sophia Lowe. Hey, Sophia. Hey, Mallory. And our regular podcast host, Megan Harris. She is here on mic. But I sound terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> Poor Megan. Uh, with all of the weird weather we had in April and May, it's really also had a tremendously negative effect on my voice in the last few days. Yeah, so trying to help spare Megan's voice here. Um, if you are new to City Gas Pittsburgh, usually Megan is the main one on mic. Um, I'm the executive producer, sometimes behind the scenes with Sophia. But as a team, we cover news, local history and nostalgia, food, arts and culture. We share lots of events and ways to plug into the city. And this guide to episode is fun because it's kind of all of that coming together into one. Yeah, so we're here to talk about everything you can experience in Pittsburgh this June. So uh, we have things that you can do all month long, some like one-off festival type things. And as always, uh, where to get good food and drinks. Yes. So let's dive in. Uh, what are y'all looking forward to over the next month? Pride, 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 pride. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, this does not surprise me. You were very excited while you were producing our Pride preview episode. The big celebrations in March are happening this coming weekend, June 1st. Kuberg also has a calendar of events on their website. And I'm sure we will be including ways to celebrate and find community in our Hey Pittsburgh newsletter. But Sophia, are there any specific things that you are most looking forward to? Ooh, good question. There are so many things happening that first weekend. I think I'm going to go a little nocturnal. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have a set agenda yet, just whatever parties look fun. Uh, I have a shared calendar with friends, and there's just too many overlapping events to decide, I think, until like a day of just whatever moves me. Uh -huh. But there's things like um, jellyfish, and there's going to be a Rocky Horror screening at Row House in Lawrenceville. Mm. And then on Sunday, the second, I will be at Pride on the Shore sobbing and screaming to Chapel Rowan. I am so excited. <laughs> So what are you planning to do, Mallory, uh, through the month of June? Definitely go to the pool. That is my number one summer activity. And it's really like this time every year when we start hitting 80 degrees and above yes. that I get really antsy waiting for the pools to open. Um, I know the start of the pool season is time to the end of the school year since a lot of lifeguards are in school. Uh, but it always feels so late to me. Like, aren't pools supposed to open Memorial Day weekend? That's what I remember from my youth, but I mean, my youth wasn't spent here. So maybe that's just because I grew up in a more Southern climate. I don't know. Uh, what is the opening date? I don't think I've actually seen them say. Yeah. So, you know, the city has been saying that the tentative opening date is Saturday, June 15th. Tentative. So I know. I'm not quite sure why they slipped that uh, word in there. But just in case. Just in yeah, case. <laughs> just in case anything goes truly awry. Um, so in early June, so pretty soon here, um, we should be learning from the city which pools will actually open. I feel like this has just become this annual summer ritual since COVID, like waiting to hear how many lifeguards the city has and which pools will actually be open open. I know people are anxious to hear about Bloomfield Beach because that was closed last year. You may remember uh, the maintenance work is over, so it should, fingers crossed, be opening this year. 
I mean, until someone poops in it again, and then they'll close it for <laughs> weeks or no. months. No, <laughs> don't please, say it. Please keep your poop to yourselves, so we can all enjoy <laughs> Bloomfield Beach. Oh, truly, um, I did see a story uh, in WTAE that uh, Mayor Gainey's spokesperson said the city is hoping to get at least fifteen pools open, uh, which is the same number as last year. So I think their goal is to like at least have as many options as as summer twenty twenty three. Yeah, one no-go pool I saw was uh, the Homewood pool. Um, It's being renovated, so it's out. Um, But if you're feeling truly antsy, the Allegheny County pools open sooner, uh, June 1st, officially. No tentative about it. Uh, (laughs) And that includes the Boyce Park Wave Pool, the North Park Swimming Pool, and the Settlers Cabin Park Wave Pool. I didn't realize we have wave pools. Yeah, I always forget we have them. Uh, But they're really cool. I've seen photos. I've never actually been to any of them. I went to a birthday party at one as a child, and maybe I was just a little too young and too small, but I remember the waves feeling a little bit dangerous, a little bit hazardous, so I guess go at your own risk. Okay, but I'm an adult now, so (laughs) glad to know that I can enjoy it and that the (laughs) waves aren't, like, too little for me. Yeah, I was about to say, I feel like having puny waves would be worse than having aggressive ones, but I don't know. Again, that's that's adult Megan speaking. (laughs) But the pro tip, at least for the city pools, um, because it's $5 a day if you're just going to go, like, a one-off time, um, is to get a pass if you're going to go many times at all. Um, You can get it in families, um, either as, like, your household or as a group of friends. Uh, It's starts at $60 for four people. um, And then it's a little bit more per person after that. Um, Totally worth it, in my opinion. I do it every year. And just so you know, you do need to go in person to get that pool pass. Uh, You can't sign up online. That's true. And they're little metal tags. They're so cute on your keychain. Oh, I'm going to lose that. Oh, no. (laughs) No, it's really great. It's a different shape and color every year. My favorite one was like a pink Michigan one year. I really liked it. Why Michigan? We're in Pennsylvania. Who knows? Who knows? (laughs) Some some Michigan expat uh, was in charge of design that year. But yeah, you can find out uh, more information about all of this on the city's website. There are also some discounts or even free passes available for certain groups like children under 15, disabled veterans, if you're active military, and then folks who get government assistance. But you do need to be a city of Pittsburgh resident to qualify for any of this. Ooh, good tips. I love discounts. So I haven't been to any of the city pools yet. Going through a few of them is definitely on my list. Um, Besides Bloomfield Beach, do either of you have any favorite pools? Yeah, I mean, my personal favorite is Highland Park, largely because it's very convenient for me, but also it's spacious. It's got grass. It's in a beautiful park, which a number of our city pools are. Um, There are a lot of great ones. Yeah, my favorite is Riverview Park for a lot of the same reasons, Mallory. My only complaint is that it's a large staircase to get up to it, and then there's no shade. Uh, Mm. But Riverview as a whole is gorgeous, and you can kind of come and go. It's nice. I really like it there. Yeah, that one does feel a little like you're a little more secluded from the city, which is nice. Yeah, and great views. Yeah, and you know, you don't just need to take our recommendations. Um, You should stay tuned for an episode in the near future. Um, We'll have Jill Turner, a.k.a. Jill Rates Pools, on to talk about her extremely intense system for ranking Pittsburgh's public pools. Yes, I love power rankings. I love rubrics. I love people who will go hard so I don't have to. You will love Jill then because she has one heck of a rubric. She performs a true public service. Uh, We had her on last year, so she will be back uh, in the coming weeks with her updated rankings for the season. And I guess keeping with the outdoors theme, uh, something I like to do in the summer, um, so, you know, in June, uh, is go camping. Uh, It's a little aspirational, I feel like, now. Mallory, I don't know if you feel the same. Um, Since I had a baby, everything involving Mm -hmm. gear and packing is just so much more complicated. Um, But I learned while preparing for this that June is National Camping Month. Um, I feel like I've mostly been in, like, New York and West Virginia, I'm realizing. Um, But I am hopeful that this is my year for cherry. Springs State Park. Um, It's like a three or four hour drive northeast of the city, uh, but it's the only dark sky certified place in all of Pennsylvania. This has been explained to me before, but I can never remember what exactly does a dark sky certification mean? Yeah, I mean, I don't have the official definition, (laughs) but um, I've heard of dark sky places and it's pretty much like the name sounds. It is a very dark sky. You're going to see a lot of stars more than you'd see in like a city or even maybe like a suburb if you live, you know, near a lot of streetlights or something. Obviously, like the conditions need to be right. It can't be super cloudy. But yeah, that's also on my list, too. 
Yeah, no light pollution, which is just like kind of hard to imagine in a city atmosphere, you know? Right, Mm -hmm. right. Um, But I did take a look around um, the other dark sky listings in our area. Uh, There are a couple west of us that surprised me in Ohio, one in Fry Family Park. um, That's about a two-hour drive from us near Canton. And another one a little bit closer in Geauga County outside Cleveland. Um, Plus, if you really fancy a drive, uh, one is five hours south of us in West Virginia. Uh, But yeah, I just I'm so excited. And I think I found the right girlfriends finally that will go to Cherry Springs with me. This show has made me realize what an Ohio pile loyalist I guess I am because that's where I've gone camping before. It's also the spot I always recommend. So this is my summer to branch (laughs) out to find some new spots. I'm definitely going to be taking the places you've recommended under consideration, Megan. Um, Sophia, have you been camping around Pittsburgh before? Not around Pittsburgh, and I've never been camping. I don't think I ever will. No, I like outdoor stuff. I'm going on a hiking trip in about a month, but I also really like my bed. (laughs) <laughs> um, it would have to be a very extravagant glamping situation to get me to sleep outside, even if it's in a tent, even if there's a nice sleeping bag. Um, I bought a new mattress. I got to use it. I really like camping and bringing an air mattress. Like, I, we don't play anymore. We're, once we're over 30, we bring nice things. Okay, but then I have to, like, blow up an air mattress. That also seems like a lot. I'm just saying there's a lot of comforts of home to it. I think I think you might be surprised. Um, I mean, you did hate beer, all beer, until we went on a CityCast field trip for, for about it. So I, I, I maintain that it's possible you could be convinced. Okay. But drinking one beer is different than committing to a longer trip. But okay, I'll, I'll be open to it. <laughs> That's all we ask. Well, Sophia, if you do come around to it, uh, if you want someone to teach you some camping basics, maybe including how to blow up an air mattress, I'm not sure if this is included, but uh, the Outdoor Inclusion Coalition has a free library of camping gear, um, and they require a free training program before you can access it. So it's kind of like two in one. You can get comfortable setting up tents, and then you can also borrow gear instead of buying hundreds of dollars of it. And then having to store it, which is the other problem. Mm. Yes. I think this might be more likely to convince me because I also do love free things. <laughs> we also interviewed the founder of the Outdoor Inclusion Coalition, Marcus Schaffner, on our show. So you can check that out on our website um, and also get the inside scoop on a bunch of great camping spots around Pittsburgh. So once again, our website is pittsburgh.citycast.fm. Hey, it's Ryan Reynolds, and I'm here with Keith, co-star of my upcoming film, If, only in theaters May 17th. Do you want to tell people the big news? All right, I'll do it. Sign up now, and you'll get unlimited for $15 a month in six months of Paramount Plus Essential Plan on us. MintMobile.com slash switch. Upfront payment of $45, equivalent to $15 per month. Unlimited over 40 gigabytes per month. Face lower speeds. Videos at 480p. Active Mint customers by 531.24 get six months of Paramount Plus Essential Plan. Auto renews after six months. Offer ends May 31st, 2024. Separate Paramount Plus registration required. Terms and conditions apply, if rated PG. So we're about to talk about all the yummy eats and sips in Pittsburgh, and I wish I had unlimited money to throw on decadent meals. But if you want to treat yourself, we have a way to get a gift card for that extra splurge. We have a quick and easy listener survey. It just takes seven minutes. And if you fill it out, (laughs) you will have a chance to win a $250 Visa gift card. And some CityCast Pittsburgh swag. Uh, But we would really appreciate it if you wouldn't mind. Um, Just share a little bit about yourself. It really does make the show better for our listeners. Um, even if you filled it out last year, uh, new year, new data. So take a minute to fill it out again. Um, We just really want to hear from y'all. You can find that survey in our show notes, and it's also at citycast.fm slash survey. So let's move on to some food and drink recommendations. What are y'all looking forward to eating on this month? I am so excited to go berry picking. I'm going to eat fresh (laughs) berries, make pies, make compote, make all the things. I am actually so excited about all of this that I've made it my personal June theme. It's jam in June because I'm going to make jam (laughs) with all of my fruit. Sophia, I love that you always break the hype. Uh, You've also mentioned making jam on the show before. Uh, I where do you source your your materials? Do you like actually go pick them or do you buy them from somewhere? A little bit of both. I do like trying to go and pick my own fruit like once or twice a year. Last year, I went blueberry and lavender picking at Triple B Farms in Monongahela. It was really great. I pet some baby goats and uh, I just checked strawberry picking is in full swing there too. They opened up Memorial Day weekend and then the blueberries will come in July, Um, but they've also got lavender now in June. 
I know that our Hey Pittsburgh newsletter editor, Francesca, went there for the strawberries and lavender last year. She Ooh. raved about it. Um, it actually inspired a whole neighborhood guide about Monongahela. So you heard it from Francesca. This is worth checking out. Uh, there's also a really cute winery next door just because Monongahela is like such a haul to get down there. Um, might as well check out all the sites while you're there. Absolutely. Uh, Repepi, um, it's all grown right there in Washington County by this really wonderful father-daughter team. Um, they just put so much love and experimentation into their work. Um, and they also partner with Friend of the Pod, uh, the Cheese Queen, a whole lot. So you get really good snacks there, too. Yes, snacks is very important when you're going to spend some time outside in the heat picking fruit. Um, a couple of the places that are open for strawberry picking include Simmons Farm. Uh, they do have a two pound minimum per adult. So Whoa. don't bring all of your friends unless you're ready to have a bunch of berries. The thing is, you're going to need so many to make jam. So I don't actually know how to make jam. We we might go down that road on a separate podcast. So yeah. <laughs> it sounds good. Um, and then another spot is Sorgold's Orchards. They have a strawberry festival on June 1st from 4 to 8 p.m. Um, they're strawberry picking as part of that. So I imagine their fields will also be open afterwards. But I would recommend checking out their Facebook page. I always check uh, the Facebook page or try to call the farm if I'm going picking. Um, this is something I learned when I worked on a farm for a summer because sometimes we'd uh, have to close up our fields if, you know, the weather was bad or way too many people came came the day before and just picked all the fruit so we didn't really estimate correctly. Um, and it's always a bummer to drive like 45 minutes or an hour away to not get goodies. So I always check beforehand. You know, and if picking the fruit yourself and making jam from scratch isn't your jam, but I'm Ooh. Fun, uh, <laughs> if you are craving it but don't want to create it yourself, there's this local company that Francesca told me about. It's called Maple Street Jam. They have their jams at farmer's markets and in a bunch of shops like Love Pittsburgh, Mediterra, Defer, even Phipps. Uh, you can check out their Instagram to find out their flavors. They have a strawberry one that's made with honey rum and blueberry lemon also sounds very summery, very great combo. Yeah, I've heard great things about them. Absolutely. And I guess I'll continue on the sweet treats trend since I also wanted to mention National Donut Day. That's coming up uh, early in the month. It is June 7th. Mallory, mm -hmm. last year, y'all ate so many donuts because uh, you tasted for an episode without me. I wasn't here yet. Very sad. <laughs> um, are there any spots that you recommend I check out this year? Yeah. So, Sophia, when we did that episode, so many people recommended Orem's Donuts to us, um, but the team did not have it in us to drive out to Beaver Falls. In the middle of the work week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and we looked up places that carry them in the city, but it seemed like at a lot of those spots, you could only get them on the weekends. Um, but I do recommend stopping by one of the spots in the city. Uh my go-to is this cute place in Highland Park called Las Colas. It's just off Bryant Street. They have incredible custard, including lemon olive oil custard, which is my favorite. Uh, but they also sell Orem's Donuts. So that would be my recommendation. Get some Orem's and, and see if you can find a spot to nab them here so you don't have to make that drive. Smart. Yeah, and just a heads up, they are all so fancy and so large. Um, I've since learned that a shop around the corner from me carries them also only on weekends, uh, but they're just so decadent. I think it's important to know what kind of donut you are purchasing in advance. Ooh, okay. I'm sure I could still eat multiple. I love donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, we usually get like three or four in wild flavors and then just like take bites of all of them, you know? Yeah, yeah. As one does when you see a lot of very good flavors. Um, some mm -hmm. of my favorite places for donuts are Time Machine and Lola's. Um, and that also might involve a little bit more planning because Time Machine is only open in the mornings, Thursday through Sunday. But their donuts are the perfect sweet treat to pair with your bacon, egg, and cheese. And they have so many sprinkles on them. Mm. <laughs> and then Lola's has uh, specialty donuts that rotate, I think, about every week. Okay, what's an example? I went through their Instagram to peek because it's been a minute since I've been there, but some donuts that caught my attention were pina colada and this strawberry shortcake one that's like this whole sandwich. So it's like a glazed donut cut in half, strawberry compote, whipped cream. Whoa. But like I said, always rotating. So I don't know what's next. Um, but if you are there on the weekends, kind of donut adjacent, they've always got a giant ube cinnamon roll on their menu. 
Ooh, okay, that I could get behind. Some of these donuts were sounding a little too sweet and elaborate for me. Ube cinnamon roll I'm very curious about. Um, you can, of course, go support a local bakery, but if you want something free for actual National Donut Day, I think your best bet might be to go to a big chain like Dunkin'. So maybe Dunkin' on the 7th and local bakeries the rest of the month. Sign up to The Economist for in-depth curated expert analysis of world events and topics ranging from business and culture to science and technology. You'll get the weekly digital edition, online-only articles, curated newsletters on politics, the markets, science, culture and China, and full access to The Economist Podcast Plus. The Economist is independent journalism for independent thinking. Go to economist.com and get your first month free. So our guide to episodes are some of my personal favorites because it helps me get really pumped for the month and learn more <laughs> about what's happening in and around Pittsburgh. If you also really value this resource and everything else that CityCast Pittsburgh does, please consider joining our membership program. Yeah, there are a lot of perks to membership like ad-free listening, early updates, and VIP access to our events, which we happen to have one coming up tomorrow. It's Thursday happy hour at Jackworth Ginger Beer from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Yes, come for the drinks. They have alcoholic and non-alcoholic options. Come for PGH dumplings and come for cookies that I'm baking. Woo! I got so excited <laughs> by our cookie table episode last week that I'm bringing some to the happy hour. If That's nothing amazing. else, these cookies should draw you out of your house. Forget meeting us. You want Sophia's <laughs> cookies. <laughs> Always. Uh, we hope to see a lot of you there. Uh, just a reminder, everyone is invited. You do not need to be a member to come, although our members got early warning about this. So all the more reason. Uh, if you want to give us a little bit of extra support, maybe hear about some of our occasional VIP opportunities, you can sign up at membership.citycast.fm slash Pittsburgh. Uh, and if you can't make it to this one, uh, stay tuned because we'll have more throughout the summer. Okay, so last up, some fun events coming up that you should mark your June calendar for. Yeah, so there's the Three Rivers Arts Fest uh, that runs uh, for a while. It starts May 31st through June 9th. Um, there's always just so much art, uh, so much amazing craftsmanship. I don't, I don't know how to say that. Um, and then a ton, of course, of music. Um, and it's really spread out this year. It even includes the Rachel Carson Bridge, which Ooh. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. I love it when we have events on bridges. I think they're very fun. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, when I went to Picklesburg last year, that was the first time they had moved it off the bridge. Okay, not that and one. I, I don't love Picklesburg on the bridge because it's too crowded. You can't yeah, get by. Yeah, that makes sense. But I still want to do a bridge event. <laughs> I know. I'm here. I'm with you. But Arts Fest. Arts Fest is your jam this year. Yeah. And then um, if you're also planning to go to Arts Fest and you'll be downtown, World Square is also happening. So that's on the weekends, May 31st to June 2nd and then June 7th to June 9th. It's an international celebration with food from all over the world, cultural activities, dances and performances. So that also sounds really fun. It does. Um, and then uh, for any father figures in your life, uh, there's Father's Day on June 16th. It's the third Sunday of the month. Yeah, we found a few events you can bring your dad or another father figure in your life to. These are pretty gendered uh, dad stereotype events, but sound great Fair if yes. your dad fits the bill. <laughs> uh, there is a car show in Sudler's Ridge on the 16th from 2 to 5, and that's run by Pittsburgh Cars and Coffee Club. Um, but if your dad is more of a boat guy than a car guy, maybe book a cruise on the Gateway Clipper. They've got a Father's Day cruise from 4 to 6. That's also on the 16th, and it costs $65 and includes a buffet. Personally, I don't know that I could ever uh, partake in a buffet post-COVID, but others I don't know, may not my, have my the same anxieties. My dad loves a buffet. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this, is for, this is for your dad, Megan. <laughs> uh, and then one more Father's Day thing. I think last month I shared that the Pittsburgh Zoo was doing free admission for mothers with their children on Mother's Day. And the same thing's happening for Father's Day. Bring your dad to the zoo and he'll get in for free and say hello to the red pandas for me. Uh, later that week, we've got Juneteenth on Wednesday, June 19th. Um, but a lot of celebrations are actually happening a little earlier, I'm guessing, so they can, you know, be on the weekend when more people are free. So right now, there's the Western Pennsylvania Juneteenth celebration from the 14th to the 16th. And that's the one that's really been happening annually for a while now, um, run by B. Marshall. Yeah, there's a parade, lots of performers, um, tons of small business vendors. Um, and of course, all of it is free. 
And the city is also putting on their own Juneteenth celebration. It's the first time that the city is doing something separately. Um, but as of this recording, they haven't really shared much information about when their event's going to take place. Yeah, so we will keep an eye on any updates. Uh, but for now, Sophia, I know you've got one more event for us. Yes, this one I'm excited about. It's really wild to me. I didn't realize this existed until recently, but the event is Pogo Palooza. <laughs> so that's from June 21st to the 23rd, and it is the World Championship for Pogo Stick Tricks. I mean, there's more to it, but that that was my takeaway from the website. Yeah, I remember this from a couple years ago because uh, Mallory had just joined the CityCast Pittsburgh team. I think it had been a few days and I was like, Mallory, you want to go? You should go. Yeah, you wanted to make this my first assignment, which I politely declined. <laughs> um, but Sophia, this sounds great for you to go check out. Yes, I would definitely go to this. Uh, certainly not to compete. I don't know if I've ever <laughs> been on a pogo stick and my balance is terrible, but I definitely watch. Um, so there's a pogo stick high jump in Market Square on June 21st. And then the other two days, they'll have competitions in Wilkinsburg. And apparently Pogo Palooza has been around for about 20 years. And I went through some of the records on the website and uh, seems like the record for the high jump on the pogo stick has been 11 feet. That's very impressive and very scary. I just think I would be too anxious to watch this competition. I guess unless, I don't know, are they wearing like helmets and padding? What safety measures are there? This Jewish mom wants to know. I saw uh, photos and videos of it last year and they did have some safety equipment, Mallory. There was also some padding. I don't know if that was like intentional so that you like you try to land on it or if it's just an in case thing. So you like, you know, if something's going awry, you maybe bounce yourself in a position to land onto it. I don't know. I have a lot of questions. I will have answers to those questions maybe on June 22nd. Yes. Let us know, Sophia. Um, this is, of course, just a handful of events. So do not forget to subscribe to the Hey Pittsburgh newsletter for more. We've got things like local markets and food festivals, gallery openings, craft nights, opportunities to volunteer, pretty much anything and everything that you could imagine. And you can find all of that and more at pittsburgh.citycast.fm slash events. Okay, team, if we have to pick one event that we are going to make time for in the month of June, what do you think it should be? Where will you see us? At the pool. <laughs> yeah, Sophia, I'm really praying for you that you have a poop-free experience at the Bloomfield Beach this summer. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you enjoyed the show, you should tell a friend, leave us a review, rate the show, and of course, subscribe to our Hey Pittsburgh newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you then. I don't like that that's an option to have a poop-filled summer at the Bloomfield Beach.